All right, break hard, race rewind, back for another week um, stuck in quarantine. This week we have the 2001 Austrian Grand Prix. Won by, do we want to talk about who won real quick? Or should we get to that later? I mean, we, whichever you want. I, I say we just get to it because if you, that makes it maybe a little bit more interesting for people that didn't have the time to watch. Yeah, yeah, let's just get right in, right into it. First, I just want to start with like the, just the the running order, the grid, uh, as some would call yeah. it. Before, like, obviously, like you had Ferrari on the front row, Williams, and then like you had Sauber, Yas Verstappen qualified really well, McLaren, obviously because of McLaren back then, really strong performance. But just the mix of the grid, just like it made me wish we still had like a really diverse mix like that. I know. I know there was, there was no just clear cut dominant team. Um, obviously hindsight's always 2020 was something like that, but uh, there was no, there's no clear cut just team that was going to go out and spank everyone, you know, like, like obviously we have nowadays, like we had all, basically all throughout the 2010s. I mean, because prior to that it was Red Bull. Um, right. So it and there was no, I mean, it was a quick changing changing of the guard there. So to see, you know, to see there just be so many unknowns going in. That's race six of the year, so it's not, you know, it's not that early on. You're approaching halfway, the halfway point of the season there. Right, right. The uh, the crazy part to me about it too, and we kind of talked about this on text, was this was Montoya's rookie season, only a sixth start, and yeah. he was so aggressive so confident in the moves that he was making and just incredibly fast. And like, obviously we don't see rookies really get thrown into top tier rides like this yeah. as often anymore. But like when they did with Hamilton in 2008, he was super fast. I wouldn't call Leclerc a rookie, but like a second year driver right. getting, thrown in, getting thrown into Ferrari so fast, but like just a guy like Montoya who spent his 2000 season racing cart comes over to formula one and then just gets right after it. Right. I will say, I couldn't remember what the uh, 2001 Williams season sort of looked like. So I looked up his uh, results from that year, and they were either retirements or podium finishes. There's <laughs> I'm just not no surprised at all by that. He retired in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Ooh. nine, ten, <laughs> ten of 17 rounds he retired in, but what? finished <laughs> finished first or second in four of them, and then had a fourth place finish in. Uh, the British Grand Prix and an eighth place in the Hungarian. So it was very much like just we're either parking this thing or we're finishing on the podium. Yeah. The season, I have it pulled up right now. It's so short. I mean, like you said, 17 rounds, but it's on paper. It looks just ridiculously short. And I never knew that Indianapolis was that late in the season. It was like September yeah. 30th, second, yeah. second to last race of the year, penultimate. I never understood why they do that because like they had to compete with the NFL when they did it. And still, when they come here, Currently, yeah. they're still competing with the NFL, which obviously you'll go to a USGP because it only happens once a year where like right. you have eight, eight chances to go to your football game or whatever, something like that. But yeah, Montoya just blazingly fast. If only that Williams, uh, the FW23 could just stay underneath them, essentially. Exactly. Exactly. That was, um, I mean, I'm trying to think, did both Williams retire in this race? Yeah, they oh, did. Obviously, Montoya um, um who's this i think heidfeld no uh, ralph oh yeah that's right that's right ralph was right or ralph was right up front i mean there he had a break issue i think yeah he um, retired like on lap 10 i think that's what yeah. it was yeah it was yeah, very early for him which sucks yeah, but, you you nailed it literally lap 10 breaks um, i have yeah. the racing <laughs> reference pulled up right now man i i loved and i knew this was going to be my favorite part but was the I'm not sure what you have as our as our topics this week, but um, yeah, I kind of uh, forgot to send those over. That's okay, no need to. I just didn't want to skip over anything. As long as you lead us to them, we'll be all good. Yeah, but oh, go ahead. Well, I just I just want to get this out now. I knew this was going to be the most interesting part for me personally, but seeing the just the grid at the beginning because that it was all just so foreign and and obviously so so different. But but you take a guy like Barrichello. I mean, th this was at one point during the race going to be his second win, second career win. And yeah. then prior to this, the last F1 content that I consumed was that 2009 review video where Barrichello obviously had a great year. I feel, <clears throat> excuse me. I feel so bad for Rubens Barrichello just in terms of where his career sort of ended up at for him because he shows up at Ferrari. He's obviously blazingly quick. 
and of course gets, you know, second fiddle to Schumacher. He obviously then moves on from Ferrari, ends up at Braun with another legit shot to win races and a world championship, and then has to play second fiddle to Jensen Button too. And it's like, can this man just win one time? It's a lot like uh, Felipe Massa. I mean, that like guy, Felipe again, Massa. yeah, should have a world championship. And then he's just always sort of played second fiddle or just, you know, been at the wrong spot at the wrong time. But yeah, Rubens, I feel so bad for the guy because he's a likable guy too. I know. It's like a long-term Mark Webber. Um, I put him in the same category. And yeah. a guy that's capable of winning races, everything. He checks all the boxes and, and excels at every aspect of, of really the sport. But held back by his team and you know but like you said playing second fiddle and i had that thought to myself watching the race today or finishing it today when i was thinking like god could you imagine a whole career of that like what that would do to kind of your confidence but shout out to a guy like barrichello and weber they're all great examples that like make a good name for themselves despite that and they're they're known for almost like diving on the sword and and still just rolling with the punches did you see any of his post-race interview? I started to watch him, I think. I think I watched multiple interviews, but I didn't get to his. Okay. They were, like, basically asking him about what happened and everything, and they were like, you seem unhappy. <laughs> like, no shit, dude. <laughs> of course yeah. he's unhappy. He just took it. He just handed a second-place finish over to Michael, which obviously – before, before we even go further – Ferrari did the most Ferrari thing that they they still do to this day, where yeah. the second driver has a legit shot to win and they need their number one driver to get more points. They'll run that guy long, pit him. His tires are worn. Everybody else has already made up any sort of delta that he had. Pit him, comes out in second, and then they can swap the positions around, which we all make fun of Ferrari for being astoundingly stupid. Yeah. But when it comes to making sure their number one driver finishes ahead of everybody else, they do a pretty damn good job of it. Yeah. Yeah, seriously, the the Jean Tot special and the way the way he the way in which he like voiced that message to Rubens was despicable. He sounded so just um, beta. I guess that would be the way to say it. I don't know if that's the correct way to say it, but no, it definitely it just sounded is. weird. Well, it's because it sounds to me. It always sounds cowardly. Yeah, like, he had no yeah cowardly, and you could tell he had no confidence in it whatsoever. And they always like try to like dance around what's happening. The whole like. Fernando's faster than you type of thing where you're yeah. like just fucking say it and yeah. that's what I loved about Leclerc last year was basically forcing Ferrari to tell him to move over to let Sebastian by and like he wouldn't do it until they explicitly told him what to do yeah. and then he said okay and then he would pull over <laughs> but I love the fact that he just forces their hand like that I just wish yeah. Rubens would have done the same thing you know two decades ago almost yeah same yeah. the other thing I want to talk about we never see cars stall on the grid anymore. And this was one of the first – This I think this was the first season with launch control. And we saw four cars stall on the grid <laughs> right when the lights went out, which we never see anymore. Yeah, that literally never, ever happens. There were – you said four cars in this? Yeah. It felt like more than four, but – and that was like – I mean, that took the wind out of the sails at the beginning of the race. Obviously, I didn't know it was going to happen, but um, right. I was like, any day now, let's get this – Let's get this thing, like, up to speed. I think it was, like, Heidfeld, um, Hi, uh, Mika Hakkinen, and somebody – maybe both of the Jordans that stalled on track, and you're just like, Jesus, how, yeah. how does this happen? Um, but, yeah, kind of miss seeing that. Also, refueling, too, is still – Oh, my like, God. You forget that how bizarre so it is. slow. I, right? And then you also forget how slow or like just how bizarre it is to see cars being refueled. Like we haven't seen it shit for like the better part of a decade. And yeah. now like you watch cars being refueled and you're like, oh man, I wish this, I just wish it, we had cars being refueled still just from a strategy standpoint. Cause yeah. like you could start the race on like four laps of fuel or you can start the race on 30 laps of fuel. Like take uh, Verstappen. I mean, yeah, he was running third, fourth, all race, came home sixth, which was great. I think the first point for the Arrows team. Um, the Arrows Asia Tech, that was so weird to see. And I'm looking on Racing Reference now. It's a V10. Is it? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's another thing I miss is how good the V10 yeah. sounds. Oh, the sounds of these cars. Oh, my God. What race am I on? 
Oh, I'm on the Australian Grand Prix. I was like, what the fuck? Am Wait, I hold on. At? Don't don't click on Austria yet. Don't click on. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna quit. I'm gonna ask you. I'm gonna give you some trivia. Okay. Can you name the engine manufacturer for the Prost team? Prost GP. Oh, well, I can't say the full name because it includes this, but um, driven by Jean Alesi. None other than Jean Alesi and uh, Luciano Berti. Uh, is it something? It's very random, isn't it? Extremely. It has nothing to do with engines. I'll tell you that. I don't know. I can't. I can't think of what it actually would be, and I don't want to sound like a fucking idiot. Does is it start like? Does it start with an A? It does. Is it the Asia Asia Tech one? Oh, no, no. Asia Tech is Arrows. Ah, oh, damn it. Okay, I don't know. All right. The Prost Acer V10. <laughs> Acer. I, how great would it be if it was like the Acer computer? It is. I, yeah, <laughs> it, it is. is. I know. I was gonna say like it was on their car. <laughs> I just got to the Austrian page. That's the first thing I went down to was to try to find that after you said it. And then uh, I good. click on it and it's the right logo. That's awesome. But, but you're looking at the results just like I am. The things that and, – and we may even patch these into the video just so the viewers can see um, if that's possible. I don't know. Yeah, um, yeah we can. Just throwing out, throwing out ideas. But um, half the field DNF'd, okay? Yeah. That, that jumps right off the page at me. Um, you know, aside from that – you had half of those drivers, so we had five cars finish on the lead lap. I mean, the the chase for the top three spots were great. The racing for those were were awesome. But aside from that, oh my god, like it makes today's races look a lot better from a competition stand, standpoint. Oh, definitely. The yeah, outside of like the top three were the final classification um, between the top three was two point five seconds, which is actually really close. Obviously, it was a little bit yeah. closer. Rubens was like you know one and a half seconds behind Coulthard. Uh, then he had to let off at the finish line. I also love the fact, not to harp on this storyline even further, but the fact that he waited until right before the finish line to back off and yeah. let Schumacher get it, just to make sure everybody knew what was happening. Like, yeah. oh yeah, we know, man. Um, I just love the diversity of just having the, a McLaren, Ferrari, Sauber, BAR, Honda, and then an Arrows in the top six. Like, yeah. oh, Jack, you have Jaguar in seventh. So, like, just a really diverse finishing order, which is, again, something I wish we, we had more of. I also love Button's classification for retirement. It says engine slash spun off. All right. Uh, maybe the two coincide. I don't, I don't remember. Yeah, he did. That was a late caution. I forgot about that. That's right. Yeah, I knew yeah. he DNF, but that's a late caution. He still came on 12th. That's almost in the points by today's, <laughs> you know, today's point system. Yeah. Um, he could almost have scored at that point. For his, I, I, mean, also, I feel like – go ahead. I, I like the fact that the, only the top six positions got points. Yeah, I don't know. I think that was great for that time period because there were so many teams that were just – I mean, the whole the whole field was midfield. You know what I mean? True. Imagine, like like you said, if we offer points all the way down to 10th in 2001, there's definitely probably races that uh, people would have retired and scored. I know. Alonzo, was that his rookie year? Yep, Alonzo and Raikkonen came in together. Wow. Yeah, I know. you know what was weird about Raikkonen was, did you notice at the end they showed his onboard and he was just, I mean, it wasn't that emotional, but he was just, Yep. <laughs> like you, know, you don't see him show that much emotion now when he wins. Dude, he won the USGP uh, last, yeah, uh, two years ago. Yeah, in eighteen. And, yeah. yeah, in eighteen, and he was just like, yeah, you know, I won, and like he didn't <laughs> seem to care, which is he the most bizarre thing. Yeah, he, he just goes finally, and then he just went up on the podium and celebrated, and then everybody was like, all right, see you later. And he just doesn't seem to care. I love it's a hobby for him. Yeah, it really is. Uh, yeah, so on like my my rundown right here, I had the varying fuel strategies, which we talked about. Missed that Williams double failure when they yeah. look so competitive. Yeah, uh, which sucks. And they ate the Ferraris up off the line. Obviously, the Williams launch control was definitely the superior launch control um, for the year. Uh, Raikkonen and P four unhappy Rubens. Everything about this race was just. Just even going back and watching a race from 2001, the commentary on ITV was fantastic. They're yeah. still savages like they are today. I love British broadcasting just because they'll 
say whatever and they don't really care about like hurting people's feelings or anything they do. which is amazing and then the cars were so much like more simplistic looking and the shorter wheelbase yeah. just look better i don't know yeah there's a lot about it where i was like man i kind of wish we still had some of this yeah the cars did look did look very simple you compare that to today's cars or like the 2008 aero standards and i mean it looks like a totally different sport but I, obviously anyone with the brain would prefer the uh <clears throat> the 2001 look or i do anyways um, oh yeah also I uh, love what else random, oh, you're talking about the-, the random names that show up in this yeah in the 2001 because like everybody knows you know your top people like Jacques Villeneuve, Eddie Irvine, Yasser Stoppin, blah, blah, blah. But then you'll have like Luciano Berti, like, okay. Um, yeah. He's easily forgotten about. Uh, Enrique Tarso Bernoldi. Mar- <laughs> yeah, Enrique Bernoldi, uh, Tarso Marquez, just all these people where we were like, uh, you were just a flash in the pan. And weirdly, they're all uh, Brazilian too. Brazilian, right. Yeah. And yeah, then, those, I- those are extremely random. Every. I feel like everyone else, other than maybe like Olivier Panis, or yeah. You say hey, name. Olivier Panis is a uh, race winner, Monaco Grand Prix winner. That's right. So there's <laughs> one win, and he made it count. 1996. Was that the? Uh, was that a Jordan win, win? for him? I pr- is it, as well as I remember reading about it, I think. I know it was cool. It was a Liget win. Oh God! So he won for a French manufacturer too. Yeah, in Monaco? Wow. with a Honda engine, V10. Look at that. DJ Honda. I may just, we might have to go back and watch 1996 Monaco just to see. I'd like to watch him in a mid 90s race for sure. Yarno truly finished last in this race. He's also a, yeah, another one and done 2004 um, Monaco Grand Prix. What the hell's with these guys? Oh, he won Monaco. He won truly won Monaco? Yeah, one time. Um, and then you have like Heinz Harold Frensen. <laughs> just one of the best names in racing history yeah very good extremely german name if you were going to guess how many wins heinz has what would you guess i heard this just the other day or else i would have no clue Damn it. i think three yeah you're yeah. correct yeah which so he won san marino grand prix in 1997 with williams <laughs> and then in 1999 for benson hedges jordan which again Where'd he win? Uh, he won the French Grand Prix at Magny Cours, and then he won the Italian Grand Prix at Monza. This dude did nothing but win at historic. Heinz Harold Princeton. That's hilarious. He's like Jamie McMurray. Yeah, he is. He had a very <laughs> McMurray like, had a couple better years where he won at other places, but still. True. I mean, like I think McMurray has seven career wins, if I remember correctly. The last time I looked it up. Um, Ega Daytona Indy. Uh, Coke Charlotte. 600, yeah. Coke 600 and the fall race, which was his first win. Yeah. Are those? God damn it! I have to look it up now because I think that might be the only places he might have. If only he ever won at like Martinsville and Darlington, that would really cap it off. But I know that's not the case. Imagine he like. <laughs> I want to say he won at Loudon. See, I feel like a Loudon came in as well. Um, and <laughs> weirdly enough, I connect like random one-time winners uh of the daytona 500 to a loudon victory because of 2002 ward burton won the 500 and also won at loudon that year i don't know why what a my blind yeah i know robbie Gordon. um just kidding unfortunately <laughs> he does no have one no uh jay mcmurray has only ever won at daytona talladega indianapolis and charlotte motor speedway that's crazy yeah he had man. yeah seven i mean i knew it but he was in an 18-year cup career. Well, I say 18. 16 full-time seasons as a cup driver. Jesus. Seven wins. Man. Okay. Back to F1. That's a wild number. 2001 F1. It is crazy. How many wins does Ralph Schumacher have? I just Six. looked the other day. Yeah, it was a higher number than I, than I would have thought. Man, he wrapped all of his wins up pretty quickly, though, didn't he? 2001 was his first one. 2003 was his last one. I love all of all of the just early 2000s computer, just big computer manufacturer sponsors in this. I mean, you look up and down the grid. Obviously, we said uh, Acer. Uh, I saw Compaq. They were they were Compaq was sponsoring uh, Williams. 
Yep. I saw another one in here. Oh, Compaq was a huge Williams sponsor for a long time. Yeah, I think maybe that's why I'm so – okay, so there's really not that many. But, um, but no, maybe that's like why everybody I'm so, like, showed so yeah. many of the Williams. Everybody had like a tie-in, though, to a computer manufacturer at some point. Yeah. Just because they're like, everybody's got a home computer. Look, we design F1 cars with computers. <laughs> okay, not the same ones, but we, we kind of get it, guys. Um, I was looking through some w- Wikipedia I – um, from this race, and th- there were w- there was one page that w- that had a big picture of the Prost car delivery from two thousand or no, sorry, the, sorry the Stewart car Stewart Grand Prix mm-hmm. um, that had the the Scottish like the tartan um, I think that's the correct term for it oh yeah the, the tartan print on it and um, that was just an all time paint scheme in my opinion dude I also do miss the the random paint schemes as well, especially among, like, the backmarker teams, uh, especially, and I'm going to say, like, the minority team back in the day, they're just so strapped for money. Like, they had a base, and then they were, like, anytime they pick up a sponsor, they're just slapping decals all over the car. There's no rhyme yeah. or reason to anything. I'm like, yeah. I wish small teams would still do that. I don't like, know. imagine just Alfa Romeo or Williams now just, like, oh, we just need a sponsor. Just smack yeah. it on the side here. And we'll Who can go. we sell it to? Yeah, exactly. Uh, but overall, like, I'm just really glad to go back and watch old F1 races and sort of knowing about like how everyone's career for the most part panned out too. Like, obviously I'm going through this right now. Hang on a sec. So you have Schumacher, a world champion, Raikkonen, a world champion, Jacques Villeneuve, a world champion, Mm -hmm. Button, a world champion, Alonso's a world champion. Montoya? No, Montoya never was a world champion. Shit. <laughs> close. Sorry. Yeah, no, you were close. You never idiot. actually got it done. And then you have Hawkins. So you have six world champions, oh, yeah. six current or future world champions on the grid there, which is crazy, you know, when it's a 20 car, 20 car grid, 22 car grid. Either yeah, way, 22. like, yeah, you're like just the fact that so many of these guys went on to become and still are the names we talk about, especially in Raikkonen and um, Alonso. Yeah. It's just bizarre. It's so funny to watch like a very young Alonzo and Raikkonen come in together and then just like, hey, listen, guys, in the next nine years, you're going to win three world yeah. championships between you and just dominate races. Yeah, seriously. I really, 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 really wish Hackenden wouldn't have had an issue and could have actually raced, especially considering, you know, the McLaren's won. Because um, I've always kind of He's been always kind of a mystery to me. I've never, you know, sat down and watched a race from start to finish with him in it. And, um, you know, I mean, he was a two-time – he's a two-time champion. So, I'd love oh, yeah. to just kind of see that in action. He – um, I feel like he always kind of cut his career, like, just too short. Ten years bounced out. Yeah, I agree. Like – Eight eight wins in 16 races in uh, 98. Yeah, dude, 98 and 99. The McLaren MP4 13 and 14 – fucking just dominated yeah now that i look at it right here he yeah he had two bad races well outside of retirements but like hungary and monza and monza is a throwaway your car is just not built for straight line speed but everything else right oh the the other thing i really like about looking at these old races or not old races, but old uh calendar schedules it's just seeing like the new races that get added or the old races that get sort of taken away scrapped. Like, yeah. yeah right here i was just looking and um Malaysia shows up on the calendar in 1999 for the first time, and I'm like, ah, oh, the Sepang circuit was a fantastic circuit, and I miss it now. And it's just cool to see like its birth. And like 2004, uh, Bahrain comes on the schedule, and I remember when that happened as a 14 year old being like, one, where's Bahrain? Bahrain. <laughs> yeah, this this is never gonna last. Like it's a little island country, and now here we are in 2020, and we still go to Bahrain. And I wouldn't call it like a crown jewel, but it's still like a very much looked forward to race because yeah. of the lights. Yep. Yeah. But yeah, yeah it's, it's, that's a big enough deal. I agree. Uh, totally. Old F1 is the best. Um, it really is. I'm anxious to hear what the what we're going to watch next for the record. That's what I was going to get ready to talk to you about. What, okay. What's the next one? Do we do IndyCar? Do we do F1? Um, or do I'm, we do NASCAR? I'm pretty bought into watching old F1 race, and we're clearly going to have some – a couple more weeks you know to be able to do this so we're locked down till may 1st here so yeah i got a, i got two more no 
a month. I must have two months and give myself a heart attack right there. I got four weeks at least. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm good with another F1. What do you have up your sleeve? Uh, do you want to go nineties or do you want to go 2003 European Grand Prix? Ooh. So Oh three would be a couple of years after. I think Let's... it's 2003. I'll have to come back to you on which race in 2003, but there's definitely one I want to watch. Okay. Let's, uh, or we can do the nineties, which I'm fine with as well. Okay. Let's do, let's do the nineties. Okay. Just because I'm kind of into the nostalgia <laughs> and we might as well, we might as well pick it now. I mean, do we want to do like, I, I want to watch like a 96 Monaco, but I know how Monaco is. Okay. Monaco. But yeah. also I want to see how like they end up winning this. Um, I don't care. Let me look at the, uh, like 1996, why don't we do the 96 San Marino Grand Prix? Okay. And well, that'd be cool because it's a track we don't go to anymore. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. I, I'm not going to click on it. I'm not going to find out who won. There I just hope go. it's actually on YouTube. Let me find out real quick. Yeah. Let's double check that. 96 San Marino. Okay. Imola. Um, the full name of that track is like – a whole line on Microsoft Word long. Oh, I know. Uh, like, there, I don't see it on here. Circuit yeah. di Enzo e Dino Ferrari or something like that. Let me look. 1996 San Marino Grand Prix. No, there's only. Oh, nope. That's 94. They only have clips of it on here. God damn it. This is a this is a weird take, but I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna try Vimeo. I think they've had some like. F1 content on there before that I haven't been able to find anywhere else. Ooh, that would be nice. Um, There's a, did somebody really just post the live scoring for the entire race? They did. Okay. <laughs> All right. I do. Old F1 live scoring was the best to me. My dad used to put it up on the computer when I was a kid. And I yeah. thought it was the craziest thing ever. I was like, you're telling me we could look at the live timing. You're, you're like, this is what they see. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, yeah, dude. And I'm like, oh my God. I can't yeah, this right now. that is pretty cool. Um, okay, so we may on, have to go back to the drawing board there. It's not on Vimeo. Okay, there is a 1996 Italian Grand Prix at Monza on here. Okay. On uh, on YouTube, which we can okay. do. Let's do that. All right, it's an hour and a half. I have no idea. Is it in it English? Is. Because <laughs> I, I watched this one in German, and I watched Austria in German, and I picked up like every 10th word. So. <laughs> Yeah, it is. It's on Eurosport. Eurosport, so we're good. Good. That was bad. Yeah, because we had it. Anybody tried to watch, and the ITV one got pulled down. Our bad. But like we had midweek. Idea. Yeah, <laughs> midweek. I was I had like ten laps to go. I went to click on it, and it was like video unavailable. Fuck. But yeah, like you, I had to watch it in German. So. Yeah. And you know, German's not that great. All right, so 1996 Italian Grand Prix from Monza. We have no idea who wins. Um, I was six. You were. Three four. or four? four? Four. Okay, yeah. So 92 guy. <laughs> Who even knows at this point? Um, yeah, and if you haven't watched this race, definitely go back and check this one out. 2001 Austrian Grand Prix. You can follow Zach on Twitter at Zach Miles2. Myself, actually, it'll say it right underneath his name. So, like, obviously, That's you right. know that. Mine, yeah. Apex Off. Yeah, <laughs> Zach is on Twitch at Zach Miles2 as well. Check out the blog, Apex Off. And we'll be back next week to talk about more of this while we're still stuck inside. Yeah, cannot wait to watch this one.